Today I have three budget-friendly Easter DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So for project number one, I have a beautiful wreath. We're going to be using some thrifted and Dollar Tree ribbon and that's what I have here. Use whatever you like. I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign with the bunny. It says hop and I'm going to use this wreath that I've had for a long time. I thrifted it and here are the measurements for you if you want to do something approximate. I wanted an oval so that it would maintain like a sort of an egg shape. I'm going to take off the flower that is on the bunny and we're going to have to find a way to attach the sign to the wreath. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner or chenille stem, whatever you want to call it, some hot glue and a little piece of paper. I'm going to press that down and let it cool and go to the other side and do the same thing. You need to kind of put it on there and, and look at it and see if it's where you want this to connect. And then set it aside to cool. We're going to start looking at some flowers and these are thrifted flowers. I'm, uh, I'm not sure where they came from. I can't see the tag. But you can get them pretty much anywhere this color this time of year. I'm going to feed these wires through here and then twist them on the back. Very easy. And do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you position that little bunny right where you want him in the wreath. And I'm trying to make sure that he's down far enough that I can see the top of his little head. So we're going to make sure that it's tight. When you flip it over, you can tighten it up and then poke those little pieces of wire straight down into that ribbon and to the wreath. All right, I want to save these leaves, so I'm just going to push them up toward the flower head and go ahead and cut these off. I'm leaving about five inches and then we're going to pick our greenery and cut those off. I want this to be something that is not so bushy, so I'm going to trim it down. And I only had three of these pieces of fern, so I'm going to try to place them strategically so that they can be seen. It's really easy with this type of a grapevine wreath because you can just poke it down in there and it will pretty much stay where you put it. But I'm going to give you some options in case yours is not being agreeable. You can use a little hot glue and press it down like that until it's dry. Or you can make some little pins, which is what I do. And you're essentially making, taking the floral wire and making like, like a little bobby pin. If you're familiar with a bobby pin, you're just going to fold it just like that. And then you're going to make sure that it is over the stem part of your flower or your greenery. Push it through your wreath. And then on the back, just twist it around and poke it back into the frame. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, I'm working in a somewhat of a moon shape on the side, and I'm going to do things in opposite directions. So I'll have part of the arrangement going upward, and then I'm going to do it backwards on the bottom and have it going sort of, well, backwards or in opposite direction. So pretty much their stems are facing one another, if that makes more sense. Okay, so I'm going to take the flower and bend it so that it has a little neck. It's bending its head forward. And then I'm going to push the leaves up and then feed it down into the wreath. That's so simple and you don't even have to have any glue to make these flowers stay, which is great because these are very pretty flowers and I may want to use them again in another project. Same thing here, I'm going to push up my leaves, bend it, make a little neck for it, and then press it down. The reason I bend it is so that it will be facing straight upward instead of being at an angle. So I want it facing outward so that when it's hanging on the wall or the door, you can see it right into the center of the flower. And that's important with these flowers because it's got that very pretty greenish yellow in the center. And I want you to be able to see that, not just the pink side of the flower. So continuing along, pushing up the leaves and 
arranging those flower heads, just kind of bending it out. And you can see that the we're forming a moon shape on the side. So my third piece is going to go right here on the side. I'm just going to bend it a little. And then continue adding greenery here and there where it makes sense and elongating that line of flowers by just continuing around the side a little bit. So what was our moon shape or our, our quarter moon shape over there is now a little bit elongated going toward the side. And I'm going to go up toward the top and this flower is smaller than the rest of them so I think that it is appropriate to be at the beginning. A lot of these flowers, if you have a good quality flower, you'll be able to kind of play around with those petals and make them stay where you want them instead of just using squished flowers. And I know sometimes when we get them, they're mashed, but just fluff them out. Fluff them out and give them a chance. Um, they have a lot of potential. So rather than the flowers that he had on his neck, I decided that a little, little pretty bow would be appropriate. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this ribbon. I did thrift it, but it is originally from Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's out this year, but they do have a really pretty plaid that you can use. I just want something that's going to coordinate with the other ribbons that I've chosen and also with the flowers. So with these bows, you know, just keep playing with them. Don't give up on yourself and, and think that you've created a disaster. It's easy enough to fix, and then you can force it into place with a little bit of hot glue if it is not agreeing with you. So just a dot. It doesn't take a lot, and I'm just using my thumb on the inside so that it doesn't make the bow flat. I'm only gluing down the bottom or the back portion. And then we're going to glue down the tails, and they'll stay right where they need to be. Now we're going to start on a pretty bow. I'm going to take 18 inches and fold it over. And then I'm going to fold this several times. And in the end, I'm going to have three loops on one side, two loops on the other side. This is an easy bow. And don't worry about it. If you lose track when you're counting, that is totally fine. Whatever you come up with is going to be a pretty bow. I assure you. Just fold it over several times, don't worry about it. Now I'm folding it in half so that I can get my centers and I'm going to notch this bow, just cutting through the wire and right into the fabric. This bow has been done lots of times by me. It's an easy bow to do. I did not create this bow. Some people say that it is the Olivia bow, but I've seen it done by people other than Olivia as well. So I don't know who originated it. Can't really give credit to that person. But I can give thanks because this is a very, very easy bow to use. Same process here, but I'm going to have two loops on each side. And then I'm going to cut this off. This ribbon that I thrifted does not have any wire in it. But it is a very, mm, I'll say it's a thick, good quality fabric that this ribbon is made out of. So carefully putting a notch in the side here, turning the bow around and notching it here. Then I'm going to line the notches up, make sure that your loose ends are downward, and then you can use a pipe cleaner. You can use whatever you like, but a pipe cleaner works best for me on this type of bow. Slip it into the notches of the bigger bow, and then you're going to flip it over. get your zip tie arranged here. I'm just going to kind of pleat the back of the bow just in the fold before I pull it tight. And then start pulling out the tails and the bow. I like to start on the bottom of my bows when I begin to fluff them out. It's just a little bit easier for me. Um, but you can do this whichever way you would like. And then I'm going to pull the top apart. So you see I have five loops on the bottom and four on the top and the little tails that are sticking out there. Now feel free to cut the tails down very low if you want to do that. You can dovetail the tails. You can cut them at a slant, just whichever way you like best. 
I wanted to do the dovetails on here. They're not really noticeable in the end with this bow, but in the event that they would show up, I like the idea of them being dovetailed. Just seems more festive. And this is sort of a Eastery and definitely a spring wreath. And so easy. And I've spent very little money. I bought the sign. I had everything else already. So that's pretty good, right? $1.25 for the sign? Yeah. So even though this doesn't have wire, the quality of the fabric is allowing me to move that around and keep it in a nice shape. And then we're going to do the tails. Very easy. We're going to do 18 inches for the tail. Just cut off one of each of those ribbons and I'm going to slant these. I'm going to mix it up, give it a little variety. Just cut it on a slant. Very easy. So you have some options. You know, you can, you can do it a bunch of different ways. You don't have to copy me exactly. You can do whatever you are inspired to do. That's why I do these videos. It's to inspire you. It's to make you think, hmm, I could do that. But I like, maybe I like purple. Or maybe I like blue or yellow better for Easter. Whatever you like, you can do it that way. Or maybe you were at Goodwill and you found a really beautiful gray and white checked ribbon. Go ahead and use that. Whatever you have, you can use it. It's going to be unique and it's going to bring you joy because it's going to be exactly what you love. And that's what we need in our home. So we're going to use the wire here that we twisted this with. Go right through that wreath and twist it around. And then we have our tails. And I wanted the tail to be kind of attached sort of toward the bottom, toward the inside, so that we have plenty of length represented and the bow doesn't cover the entire thing up. I'm going to feed a little through the back behind there and then a little on the side because I like the way that looks. But you can do it any way you like. I just want to be sure that my bunny can be seen. So the ribbon that is around the bunny's neck, I'm going to use to tie around the center of our bow. It matches so well. It's very, very coordinated. And then we're just going to go ahead and use that ribbon to tie around just thread it between the tails there and around the back of the wreath. So tie it tightly in a double knot and trim off what we don't need. If it was in the center, you could make a hanger with that. But we have ours off to the side, as I often do in my wreaths. You see how you can curl the ribbon just with your fingers? So if you wanted it to be in the front, you could do that. Alright, I had some greenery left, so I'm just going to cut it apart and go in here and add little pieces here and there until I get the fullness that I like. You know, I always recommend that you turn your pieces side to side and look at it from all angles to ensure that you get it looking exactly how you like it. And it's looking good so far. I like this. I like all the variety in the colors in the greenery. It looks very spring to me. So I live in the country, so we have lots of types of greens in our trees and in the grasses and the moss so it's really nice to be able to put that in our arrangements the variety of color project number two we have another wreath so maybe you're not like the style of the first one let's try the second one burlapfabric.com has sent me some goodies and i got the green the white and the large burlap ribbon all from them I have some thrifted flowers. These are orange and white, but I'm going to change those out in a bit. This is a Dollar Tree sign. Very pretty, and that is from this year. And then I have this egg wreath from Dollar Tree this year. I knew I had to have this. I knew I had to do something with it. Well, I got a little bit crazy, and I broke it when I was taking the tag off. So it's easy to fix. I'm just using some masking tape, but you can use electric tape. You can use duct tape, whatever you have, to just go over the place that it is broken. Twist it around, and now it is good to go. It's strong, no problem. I'm going to cut down here at, I think I have 12 inches. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do for this wreath. So this is burlap. It's not deco mesh, but we're going to use the same technique. I'm going to fold over about an inch here, and then walk my fingers up to the end and the last inch I'm going to fold over and then pull into the center. 
it makes a cruffle, just like when you're using deco mesh. This is the technique that we're going to use to cover the base of our egg. So I have, I think, 10 or 11 of these zip, of these um, chenille ties. All you have to do is feed them through the outside ring, twist them around. I didn't think you wanted to see all of that. Then you're going to take one cruffle for each of these segments. So each of these little ties or chenille stems, I don't know why. I cannot grasp the word pipe cleaner today. Maybe my medication. Who knows? I might need some more coffee. But this is what we're going to do. You're just going to continue all the way around. I use the outer rings for this because I want this to be larger. So I want it to be on the outside rings for that. If you alternate, it's going to make it appear a little bit smaller. And I want it to be as big as possible. I love this cream colored burlap. I thought this would be the perfect way to be a base on this beautiful egg wreath. I think you're gonna like this one. So we're gonna continue around just like this and don't worry about where they overlap. We're gonna adjust that in a minute and you'll be able to be sure that your entire frame is covered. And this does a really good job. If you wanted to save a little bit, you could probably do 10 inch. Um, little cruffles instead. 12 inches what I went with and I'm very pleased with it. So here we go and this is how it looks. Go ahead once you've got those together and fix them so that they overlap each other in the right way to be able to cover your frame. And look at that coverage. Oh this is going to be really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and start making the bundles of ribbon that are going to go in each one of those cruffles. So here you see me using some ribbon that I got on clearance at, I believe it was Michael's or maybe Joann's. We're gonna do 10 inch strips. So this is a wired ribbon, really pretty. And I know that gray is a, a very popular color. And then we're gonna do 10 inches of our burlap that is wired, that is white or cream. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the beautiful green. So now we have three pieces and we're going to create stacks with these. This is easy to do. You, don't, you can choose any pattern that you like. You can put your plaid on the bottom, you can put your plaid in the middle, whatever you want to do. We're going to create an X and then a line straight down the middle. Pinch it up in the center and that is going to be our bundle. Now be sure you can use your little clips to hold it. I always do this. It just makes it an easier process. You can slant or dovetail your ends. I've found that dovetailing the ends really gives it more, I guess, kind of volume when you are fluffing in the end, and I really like that aspect. So just go ahead and dovetail or cut them at a slant. And I wanted to show you on the first one how we do that, and then pull those back apart. You can get an idea of how they're gonna look. It's gonna get a little crunched up when you put it down on your wreath, and you'll see that. I'm going to show you how we do it. So I'm going to take that off. Remember your clip is on the front side. Push it down into the, the center and then tightly twist this in. You're going to continue all the way around the wreath in the same technique. Press it down into the center and twist it. It doesn't matter which way you lay this pattern and if your pattern is messed up it doesn't matter when you fluff it you're not going to be able to tell y'all we had so much fun doing our little q a saturday i had a blast i've been stuck in the bed with a back injury and i had so much fun thank you for everybody who showed up for that um it just really it made my day it was a lot of fun and we got to know each other we did questions and answers if you're not part of our youtube family consider subscribing checking out that community tab that's on my my front page and following along with us as we do our polls and daily questions and win prizes we have a lot of fun doing that um, we've had a lot of winners and they're very happy you know, they're reporting back saying they're happy with their packages and that makes me happy because I want everybody to have the ability to craft and to express themselves and have some joy in their life. And a little package is always fun. 
Okay, so you can see now I'm fluffing. I'm turning out all of those tails. I'm dividing, making sure all of my colors are represented and my patterns are represented. And it just makes a beautiful, beautiful base. Look at that. I am absolutely loving those colors together. Stunning. I just absolutely love it. I'm so glad I have ribbon left on each of those spools to do more projects. So you may see these colors again. Now you can see it's still shaped like an egg and I love that. We're going to go ahead and take all of that extra stuff off the sign and we're going to get it ready to attach to the wreath. So use your hot glue, put down your Chanel stems or your pipe cleaners or your floor wire, whatever you want to use, and a little glue and a little bit of paper. Once it is cooled, you can go ahead and center it where you want it on your wreath and then feed those wires through the form into the back. When you do this, be sure that you're not pulling it too tight because you will crush down your wreath and it's going to not be as pretty as it would if it looked as though it was floating on the top of the wreath. And that's kind of what you want it to look like. It's just very gently resting on the top. You don't want to squish anything down by doing it too aggressively. So then take the little tails of the ribbons that are nearby and you can use those to cover up the holes that are in your sign there and you want to fluff them out so that you can see everything because the ones underneath you can't see as well. I am pulling all the flowers off of their picks and this is kind of where I decide that the orange is not the best color and you'll see that I changed it to cream. I've cut down my wires because we won't be needing those anymore up there on the top. I don't recommend this type of a pipe cleaner. It's kind of a swirly pattern, but it's really hard to use the wire cutters and cut through the fabric part. That's what's sticking. The wires work, the fabric part does not. So here are my cream colored flowers. My kids are upstairs making noise. Y'all excuse that. I'm going to use my little creamy yellow and my white and just kind of alternate all the way around. And you see, I still have my egg shape, and that's so pretty. I love that. This would be maybe more of a farmhouse look, but I still think that I'm gonna make it look more cottagey, and you'll see that shortly. So of course, I'm gonna use my greenery. I'm not gonna throw that away. You know, that part of the rustic in me is going to remain that way. That's just who I am. And I'm gonna start adding down my flowers now right where our ties or our twists are in the center of those floral bundles is where we're going to place these down you're not going to see it at all and they just fit these these daisies just fit nicely in the cup of those bundles i love that and we're going to make a little bigger leaf to go on the bottom part and it's going to go underneath the sign so we don't want to have too much going on up top and then nothing on the bottom I'm going to add some hot glue, of course, to hold these things in place. I'm going to lift up on it a little bit so that my flower doesn't disappear under the sign. I can still see the bunny, so I'm happy about that. And again, move things around where you like them once you get your flowers in there because they are going to cover up some of the arrangement. And thankfully, we can move those wires and those uh, ribbons around because they are not glued down. They're just twisted down right and this is how it looks so far so this would be actually perfect if you wanted farmhouse but I'm gonna make it a little more cottagey and I'm gonna add some beautiful little I think these are ranunculus and they are a peachy color which I am loving this spring y'all know that we've talked about it I am loving this color this spring and it looks beautiful with this pale sweet yellow just it's just a buttery soft yellow and I'm just going to add these here and there. There is no rhyme or reason. I'm definitely going to take the greenery that came with the picks and I'm going to use that as well. Doing this, in my opinion, adds more of a cottagey look. We're adding that look as if it was actually picked from a garden and brought into your home. And of course, when you do that, you are bringing in the greenery that goes along with it, right? Of course. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around where it looks like I want it to go. I didn't do a pattern with the placement of these little flowers and the greenery. 
I wanted it to look a little more wild. And doing that without a pattern kind of does that. Just here and there. I'm going to continue along like that. So what colors are you doing for Easter this year? I know a lot of people in my polls said that they love purple, so I'm very happy to say that I will be doing some purple arrangements, some purple mm, creations. We'll just put it that way. I definitely have the supplies on hand and I am ready to go with that. We're going to continue to place those here and there. And I think that looks so pretty and sweet. Dollar Tree has several different versions of that sign. They have one, I think, that says blessed. Um, they may have one that says Easter. I'm not sure. Love. And I'm not sure what the other one is. But there's at least three of them. So if you don't find this one, go ahead and just grab another one. Just go with whatever colors are in that one. Now that is sweet. That is a cottage creation if I've ever seen one. Project number three. This is a thrift flip I thought I would add in here for you. So I found this little shovel and it had some other things on it which I've taken off already. And I'm going to give it a little makeover. It's approximately 16 or 17 inches long. You can use the little, little shovels at the Dollar Tree. If they have started putting out their summer stuff yet, you can definitely use something like that. But if you decide to use something thrifted, I'm going to show you how we can take it apart and fix it up. Mine happens to have two screws that are holding the shovel head onto the wooden handle. So I'm just going to undo them and remove them. There was no glue there. And I am going to cover up the holes that are in the handle. I'm just using some of this lightweight spackling that is from the Dollar Tree. Very easy to use, or should I say the dollar and a quarter tree just going to go over all those little holes. If you have any cracks or problems with your shovel, you can go ahead and fill those in, let it dry, and then sand it off so that you don't, you know, have bumps and stuff. You'll have a good smooth surface to work with. All right, so I'm going to take a warmer green paint and cover up this bluish paint. I prefer warmer colors, so no matter what time of year, I'm always going to go toward the warmer tones for me personally that is so I'm just gonna take this chalk paint and go all over here I only used one coat be sure that you get the areas that you don't necessarily see so I'm going where the it was loose from the handle and the the stick part of the shovel it was loose so I went ahead and took it apart sanded it down and I'm putting a little glue there and then protect your eyes and nose because there's some rust on here and you can sand this off. Go ahead and start sanding it. Now the reason I did this is because the paint is raised and I wanted to make it kind of disappear. After I have wiped it down with the baby wipe and gotten all that stuff off of it, I'm going to cover it with this, I think this is elephant gray or a medium gray chalk paint. I didn't want to do the galvanized look and I think that this will be absolutely fine. My shovel was gray when I got it. So it's going to take two coats for me on this to get it to cover up completely. And I've done it kind of thickly and let it dry completely in between. I'm going to use wood glue to reattach the handle to the pole part. And when you use wood glue, you can go ahead and use some type of a stick or whatever to make sure that you cover all your surfaces on the inside so it doesn't come off. That's what I'm doing. I've got to be sure to line this up correctly so that I have my my stem part of the handle right in the center because we have to put this back on right now I don't want to have a spotless shovel so we're going to use a little bit of this antiquing wax to go over all of the edges and the sides of this shovel head I'm just making it look like it would have been dirty it would have been rusty it would have been well loved so I'm making it look like that by using the antiquing wax. I mean it is antiquing wax so we're going to make it appear old. I don't want to have a bunch of brush strokes in there so I'm just taking a, um, an old sock that I have and I'm just wiping it back some. I'm going to make sure that I line the holes up correctly with the shovel head and push it straight into there. 
and then I'll be able to reattach my screws to hold it in place. So it's Mardi Gras holiday. Who else has their kids at home right now? Isn't it fun working with your kids stomping above you and yelling in the other room? Oh, it's real life, people. It's real life. All right. So I am going to, of course, rust the screws also. We're going to make those look rusty and old. And then also where it attaches to the, I guess I'm going to say handle. I think I've called that stick part a billion things. <laughs> what do you call it? All right. I'm going to keep going around. going to make it look like it's been used, like dirty hands have touched it. And what do you think? I think I achieved that look. Now we're going to put some flowers on it. All of these pieces are thrifted. I'm going to take all of these little pieces and bits and make a pretty little arrangement. I kept you girls in mind when I made this arrangement because that is a lavender or a purplish colored bundle of flowers that we're going to use for this arrangement. Your opinion does matter to me, so be sure to leave me a comment. What do you think about these DIYs? I'd love a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. I'm just going to go ahead and stack these together in any way that I think they would look great. In any way I think that they would look balanced, but of course maintaining a cottage style. So we don't have a pattern here. I'm just kind of poking things here and there, moving it around until I get it where I like it. And I'm just holding the base of it so that I can add my pieces together and it's going to form somewhat of a swag. So you have some going downward, some going upward and they meet in the middle. I'm making sure that I get all of my pieces of stem in there and I'm going to use a zip tie to hold this together. This is the easiest way to do this rather than using floral wire. Everything would start to fall apart if you were trying to twist that end together. So now everything is tightly together. I have the opportunity to move some things around and get them where I think they look nice. I do this all the time and I do this constantly when I'm creating. Look how nicely that fits on the shovel. So I want the biggest part to face the head of the shovel and I'm going to use another zip tie to fasten it to the handle. Easy, easy, right? You can use flower scraps for this. Absolutely use your scraps. So this is some thrifted ribbon that I have and I got this the same time that I got the plaid that we used in our first arrangement or our first wreath. Just some examples of other ribbons that you can use, but I will be using this one from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut one 8 inch piece, 18 inch piece, and then I'm going to cut two of this little, it's actually like a, it's a picket fence, like a garden scene with some flowers growing up beside it, almost like morning glories. It's really pretty. I'll be sad when it's all gone. Okay, so this is the bow that we're going to make, very simple. You could see what I was doing there. If you missed it while I was running my mouth, no worries because I'm going to show you how to do it again on the next ribbon. Now this one's wired, but these are not. However, it's a very good quality ribbon and it is going to hold its shape without collapsing and I love that. You can see how we're making the ribbon now, how I'm adjusting it, and how long the tails are is going to definitely correlate with how big the loops are on the top. The idea is to make these loops a little bit smaller than what's on the burlap behind it. And then on the next bow that we do, it's going to be even smaller. So this is like a stacked bow. Very easy to use if you like somewhat of a bulky bow, but you just don't have maybe the skills that you are comfortable with in making a bigger bow. So you'll see momentarily that you're going to get a nice impact from this bow super easy to make. This time I'm just going to use some jute. Now I think I said in a previous video I'm finally very satisfied with some jute that I received and I actually got it from Goodwill which is great because I got it cheap. However I don't know where it came from because there was no label on it but it is strong very strong and that's what you need when you're bow making if you're going to use jute because it will snap and break and then your bow will fall apart. But I'm happy with this. Sorry that I can't share where it came from. Okay, so now we're going to fluff the bow. 
I have small hands and it makes it convenient when I um, are, am fluffing the bows because I can just put my finger down in the loops of even the smaller bows and pull those out and twist them around to get them in the shape that I like. Use your fingers and do the best you can. So you can see how big and pretty this bow looks. I mean, you know, it's a smaller, it's in a smaller scale, but how big and pretty it will be for the project that it's on. I don't know why my camera went yellow there, y'all. Excuse that. I'm not sure what happened. Everything looks kind of sickly. Okay, now back to normal. I'm going to put the bow on, flip it over, because when we hang this, we want the shovel head to be downward and handle to be upward. That's why I put the bow on in this direction. Cut that off. You can use a little hot glue if you're worried about it moving, but I assure you the flowers are going to hold it in place. And this is how it is going to look. Do the same thing that I tell you on every project. Look at it from all sides. Fluff that bow, move the tails around, trim where you need to trim. And then if you see any gaps, by all means, feel free to go ahead and fill that in with a little something. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? We still need a way to hang it, unless you're going to hang it off of the handle, which I don't really recommend. So I'm going to take some more of that jute and make a simple hanger. You can see how I'm doing it here. Make a loop, wrap the ends around, tie it, slip the knot down, and then you have a loop. All you have to do is trim off the tails to whatever length you like, and then we're going to add it to the handle part of this beautiful little arrangement. Protect your fingers, of course. And then when you turn it over, look at that. Isn't it cute? Here is our first project. It's the beautiful hop wreath. It got a little squished again. I need to go fluff it again. But this is the first wreath. I used a bunch of thrifted items. I only spent $1 on this wreath. And that was for the sign. Well, $1.25. This is the third project, and it is a thrift flip. Everything in that thrift flip I already had, so it cost me nothing. And then this beautiful wreath cost me $2.50 to make. I love these. These are very cottagey to me. What do you think? Do you think that these are representative of cottage style decor? Is it something that you would hang in your home? Are you going to try any of these? I really hope you do, and I would love for you to follow me on Instagram because over there, if you tag me, I can see the projects that you make, and we can talk to one another also. Thank you so very much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!